remember oh, most of the staff with the um, when we did, did you come, you did come on that too. It was the week long where we went. We started off on was it Red Festival or Seymour Fest? Yeah, and then drove straight down to Bournemouth. Yeah, or Plymouth. Was it Bournemouth or Bournemouth, Plymouth? Plymouth. Yeah. At two in the morning. <laughs> so we had an all day at the Empire. It was the wedding. Kate yeah, yeah, that's that's why there was an all day because there's an extra bank holiday. Yeah. For the wedding, wasn't that there? That was it. It was yeah. Kate and William's wedding. I had a Kate and Williams. Get that a bit close. Yeah. I had a Kate and Williams, William Poundland mug, which was backwards. Yeah. Printed. So you still got it. it? No, I don't know where that's gone, but that's, that was I probably that was probably worth quite a bit of money. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't worth quite a bit of money. <laughs> the entire drive went... down, which is me trying to smash that mug. That's where we got chink my glass from. Yeah. I was just trying to welly it out your hand every two seconds. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> so I was walking around Sumo in the gig. And yeah. Instead of getting a pint. I was going up to the bar and the master, I've just got just fill this up. <laughs> totally getting ripped off for my money's worth because it was only a cup. Um, then we played the gig and then there was that, was it Beak played, didn't they? The yeah. Beak. Yeah, yeah, then yeah, that yeah, shit cover band of, was it Metallica cover band or something like that? Damage thing. Yeah. Be careful that one, mate. I think they're still going. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> don't be making enemies. I don't care. <laughs> Um, I don't live in Teesside anymore, do you? Uh, so. Yeah, exactly. I live at 65. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I didn't like him. No offence. Um, yeah, we played. Then, didn't they... Uh, what's the word I'm saying? Um, somebody lost their guitar, didn't they? Right, I don't know. Was it Spino got his... Oh, no, that was another time. Yeah, that was did, different like, three yeah. different yeah. Times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is what I mean. It blurs all. It blurs as well. Yeah, it does a bit. I thought it? we lost... No, that was it. I lost my jacket because yeah. we drove all the way it's to Bournemouth. It's a bit of a difference with a yeah, guitar. But... <laughs> jacket. I lost my jacket because that was it. I was walking around freezing my balls off. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we left that We left that show absolutely trolleyed. Drove, God knows, seven, eight hours. Yeah. I don't know how Spino did it, but me and you were the last two standing. It was daylight. Well, that was our job every time we tuned yeah. anywhere. It was me and you. I say it was our job. We took it upon ourselves to stay awake every night. <laughs> yeah, keep the no one asked awake. you. Yeah. Keep yeah. the drivers awake. I don't know. And I, drink till daft o'clock. Yeah, I still had my cup. We danced to like Justin Bieber. Yeah. Played some absolute shit, brilliant music. And you nearly got chugged out of McDonald's. Yeah, we went to McDonald's for breakfast in the morning. Yeah. I was still drinking my beer. In my cup. I remember you getting in the front of the queue, ordering your breakfast, and them saying, oh, would you like orange or coffee? And you said, fuck all, thanks. I've got a cup full of beer to Will and Kate. <laughs> the top of your voice with, fuck knows what you were dressed in. And it was about half six in the morning. Yeah. In the middle of a McDonald's yeah. pack full of kids good. and family. So, yeah. That was good. Set off at about one, didn't we? Because I remember finishing work at 12 in the Empire because I ran down yeah. the stages. <laughs> and then we got in the van and drove all the way down. Yeah. It was great. And then you guys tried throwing me in the sea when I finally went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember you trying to carry me and I think I threw a rock at somebody. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, it's yeah, a bottle. Was it a bottle? The bottle. That yeah. might actually be my mug. Might have went then. I might have threw my mug. I don't know. No, I think I feel like you had your mug for the whole of that tour. That was one of the more ridiculous tours. It was us in Sky Fight, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, bloody hell, yeah. That was it. We had Charlton. Cause yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Because we all tried to sleep on the beach, didn't we? After it. Yeah. And then we were... Um... Not knowing as well that it was a spot for a hovercraft landing point. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know how hovercrafts were a thing outside of, um, like, G.I. Joe. Movies. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like... I was going to say France. <laughs> I don't know. It was the world's shit sure speech because it was just made of nothing but fucking pebbles. Yeah, so yeah. It was to try and sleep on anyway. So yeah. Fucking then we went... Like then the there was that, um, that, that pier... Wasn't there yeah. with like the, the weird like plastic toys and I remember finding Richie Leeson and Jamie Bradley like <laughs> huddled in some kind of like little like frog mouth toy or something on the pier. Do you there? still remember the day when we went to that the show that we meant to play that day though? And we'd been swimming in the sea all day, no one else had been. And we thought nothing of it, even though it was packed summer's day. No, I can't and we'd remember. all been in the sea swimming about doing whatever we were doing. Got the venue and the front was like, What you've been doing today? Oh, I've been swimming and he's like, oh, I've been swimming back, so like, in the sea, where else would you be? We're in a coastal town, like what you're on about. And he goes, Well, you're not bothered about the shark. And we're like, What? And he's like, Oh, there's a great white spotted just off the coast last week. And like, no one's been swimming, it's been banned. I can't yeah. remember. I, can remember I didn't that. know that. I don't seem to remember that. Uh-huh. I remember I, being on I the beach being, and some people were getting really pissed yeah, off yeah. that no one had fucking told us out about the 60 locals yeah. that were on the beach. <laughs> 
And did then someone, we saw one in on the night. Did someone push Charlton in and he was really mad because he had like his phone in his pocket and all, <laughs> all, all of his really, money as well. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. He had yeah. his hand in a bottle of beer. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> it would, it, didn't somebody go busking that day as well? Charlton. Yeah, I Charlton, who else was in that band? Sky thought it was Fod. Fod, yeah. Fod. And um, Mikey was a drummer. I can't remember what. Yeah, they he, went he busking. They could be quite shout loud for a bit. Yeah. I remember the... Um, they went busking that day and made some money on the beach and stuff. Yeah. And we just ended up being like hobos from the North East. <laughs> just been scruffed. That's what we look like when every two would be yeah. honest with me. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty much right. <laughs> it was quite fun, like, touring, my kind of first experiences of touring and like gigging outside of the North East was with you guys and like filming stuff and just selling merch, whatever. And um, I remember like after that going on some tours with some other bands and like bands that I was in and stuff like that and I was like, oh, I, I thought every tour was just wild because that's what yours were. Like, like they were non-stop. They were, like, so much fun. But then, like, that's just not how everybody else do it. No. I was like, oh, they were, like, oh, like, really professional and, like, yeah. they were like, yeah, we're going to, like, fucking eat some hummus and then go to bed. And I was like, eh, Celery sticking like, hummus, <laughs> yeah. It's nine o'clock. Yeah. So then I was the weird one and I was like, shit. And I, but I guess, like, in terms of, like, our lot, I was probably the t- one of the tamest. I don't know. Well, well to, I definitely, have, moments. <laughs> so I definitely have my moment. Like, yeah. well, I've got vivid memories of you doing some pretty ridiculous stuff as well, and being two yeah. absolute states. I was, talk- I was talking yesterday, I went for a pint with Easter, and I was talking about um, Rock City and um, throwing up on their window on the inside when I thought <laughs> the window, because I thought the window was open. <laughs> uh, and I was like, I just abandoned ship because I, I, it was across the front seats, and Spencer tried to wake me up. And I have this, like, I, I don't think I get it anymore, but I used to have this weird thing where generally if I stayed up past 5 a.m., I'd throw up. Right. Like if I, if I was on a drink anyway. One minute past five. Yeah, yeah. like it was bizarre. It happened. Like, and I wouldn't even like, wouldn't be a psychological thing. So I wouldn't be like, oh, it's five o'clock. And I'd be like, oh, I'd be sick. I'd like, I'd throw up and I'd go, yeah, five minutes past. Like, yeah, yeah just, um, so that happened because Spence woke me up. And, um, yeah, but yeah, I went to throw up out the window. But the window was closed. So I threw up <laughs> on the inside and I was like, well, I just fucking want to sleep there. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> kind of like fell out the door, was thrown up with all the, like behind all the wheelie bins while Charlton was on the phone to his girlfriend at the time. And um, at the same time, I was trying to smash a bottle off his head. So it just wasn't, <laughs> like, just wasn't working. Had, like, you know, the little stubby bottles of BDR. Yeah, they're like, sand probably beers. quite hard to smash anyway, you know what I mean? Like, you just, just going like that, go ahead, fucking scream this bird on the phone. <laughs> mean. So yeah, so it's like that, and it's in really no, you well, you said, Yeah, that was the tour essential, though, wasn't it? Sand beers, those little beer bottles. Yeah, busy. Remember are. Jim? Jim, remember this? When uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he used to get a crate each, and Jim would like pass me a beer. <laughs> yeah, it's a standard thing we've already do, was it? It was go to Tesco, load up on as many cheap crates of lager. Bottle of Bucks Also oh, yeah. known as sand beer. Yeah. And then you were always getting fucking tins of hot dogs to yeah. eat because we were too poor to buy anything else. <laughs> yeah. Loaf of bread. A pack of, of bread. Tesco's own. Uh, Wafer thin turkey or and ham. If we got paid, and a shows, anything as we got well. paid was just straight on beer. No yeah. And a big tub of butter. <laughs> and he used to leave Shipping it in the van all week. <laughs> <laughs> and then bloody, remember that time everybody stopped wearing socks? And like Ash and everybody's socks were just about and everybody just had stinky no. feet. No. I was remember Ash. Oh, do you mean because it was like <laughs> so much? Like a fashion Yeah, fashion Everybody Everybody wore like so Tom's. Like low cut vans. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Vigils, and then like, it was just, Everybody's feet was stinking in this in this van, and I remember Ash always kicking off and buying air freshener and stuff for it. Like he was fuming. I was fucking rank that because it was like sweaty socks going everywhere. Everybody, yeah. you know, it was awful. I think I remember a few went in people's mouths. <laughs> I remember like condensation in the um like the bunk beds and yeah. stuff. It was just disgusting. Then you had like Cooper. Remember when Cooper was in the van and he gave us that like silk. Or was it you giving us it actually that silk like duvet thing that used to stick to you and that was stinking? Fucking <laughs> awful. Yeah, our van was a pretty bad place anyway. I mean, we paid what five, six hundred quid for our very from first my student loan. loan. Yeah. <laughs> was it? Yeah. <laughs> I always remember getting my student loan my first year at uni and <laughs> Ash and Spencer and everybody rang me and went, Yeah, that loan. Um, <laughs> what are you doing with it? Don't know. Surviving. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to spend on a van? I think it was about 800 quid. About 800 quid. It lived on my drive. I had my to get towed when we bought hated. it. Yeah, it's <laughs> we had what it started off as a sixteen seat. It took all what the seats. Out. LDV, LDV convoy. convoy yeah. No, was convoy, was a tiny, big big convoy was a tiny one. It was like um, and was it was a long wheelbase. Was, was it? No, convoys are them little things. Oh, right. It? Yeah, it, it was, was a big horse fans that everyone used to yeah. do, used to have. You also like for me, I, I was obviously you converted the van to have 
like a bit in the back of the storage and bunk beds. Yeah. Converted to very like... <laughs> it was a door. Some shelves in there. <laughs> we cut a door up and, and it was put a door. It was a door from our house where we'd have like wooden doors taken off that we propped like put between two bits on the yeah. van to sleep yeah. on. And then... Uh, but I, 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 again, I just thought that was the norm yeah. until I started to with other bands and they're like, no, we just find places to stay and sleep Yeah, on we get hotels. Like, what, beds? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hotels? What oh, were they? We got two hotels the entire town. We yeah. Toured. And how many tours have we got? One of them was free. Shit loads. Yeah, in London. Yeah. yeah. A few times that was free. I think we got twice one, in one month. We got paid because the guy couldn't pay us for the show, but he said he could pay for us a hotel. Yeah, he gave us like hotel key cards instead. <laughs> they should pay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were simultaneously known as like one of the ones who managed to get out and do stuff out of T-Side, but also some of those unprofessional people yeah. that you've ever met. But we could be professional. <laughs> we had to arrive if on time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and we'd bring our own gear <laughs> and watch Leeson get pissed off at everybody. Who'd go to and go, and use your breakables. Bring your fucking own breakables, dickhead. <laughs> uh, yeah, someone asked him for some drumsticks, didn't they? And he was like, <laughs> he's your, like, and he'd been, I think in the van, he'd been like fuming about that whole thing anyway. Like That was the was weekly a, story. Was from um, <laughs> Def Vano and Def Vano were getting massive. Right. And they've released that album, we were playing them on Rock City. And the drum came over and was like, uh, excuse me, you're the drummer. Can we uh, can I borrow some drumsticks? He was like, are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> Furious George. But, yeah, yeah. nickname. I yeah. don't even know where we ended up with you. I can remember massively embarrassing myself with you the first time you got in the van with us. Why? Because we were chatting about tattoos and like bad ones. And I remember going, oh, <laughs> uh, have you seen that one that guy's done with the, uh, the shark and a rose in one? And you just rolled up your sleeve and going, no, oh, this one. <laughs> it was probably the first conversation with each other, so that was a laugh. Yeah. But that was my first memory of ever having you on tour with us as well. I um, I can't remember how or why I ended up in the van like. I just was there. I don't I remember, know if I remember, I remember you being you. in Nine Lives of Skydives and drunkenly telling us that you really wish we'd all be your friends. Yeah. Yeah, because I was... <laughs> which, which I will hold to this day as one of the most things that I'm going to use to embarrass yeah, you at any given opportunity. Right. I was in the fucking band <laughs> with old people and I was like, I could just see like you guys and Beyond This Earth and whoever just like being my age, you know, like the same age as me and you just looked like you were having a fucking ball the whole time and you were all getting wasted all the time and I like... I was just with these guys that were really into prog metal. You know, <laughs> prog you know, metal. Good dudes. Like, I learned a lot being in a band with them, but we didn't have a lot of fun. Especially, it was like, it was literally like just fucking looking across the pond and just being like, oh, look at all them. They're all fucking bad. They're all <laughs> drinking two litres of cider. I wish that, I was like. their friend. Yeah, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I wish and I, I could hang around with those uncool yeah. guys. <laughs> and then I did, and I was like, fuck, I do this for Age yourself drastically. <laughs> yeah. Can't hack yeah. it anymore. <laughs> I think I just picked up a camera and I was like, I'll just come and film some stuff. Yeah. With like zero experience. and But the beauty of obviously your band again was that your van was fucking massive. Oh. So that there was always room to take extra people on tour. So. Yeah. Yeah, that was like, I also used to love bringing extra people because we used to bring mine. Yeah. Who was our manager. <laughs> can't see me doing the quotes. Um, then we used to bring, Robbie came along, I remember one time. Then there was yeah. Mark. Who's Mark? Um, yeah, it was Mark. I don't know. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark used to come and do merch. <laughs> yeah. Then Knights used to pop along now and again. He used to pop Another along. Local yeah. yeah. And then uh, whoever else, really. Yeah, we bought the big van with the intention of having loads of room. Yeah. And then piled and it full of more people. <laughs> yeah. So we had less fucking room. Yeah. And took seats out, <laughs> which made no sense. Seats out of it. Built more beds in the bunk bed where when you're laid in it, your face is about an inch from the ceiling. Yeah. So it was horrendous and no one wanted to sleep in it, yeah. apart from me and you, which was fine. Yeah. It didn't lock. Oh, yeah, we still so used we a, a rope. We had a tow <laughs> rope. <laughs> or a tow rope. To tow the rope for the lock. side door. <laughs> that was quality. Oh, yeah, I'd and then we had that. to put the Union Jack flag on it. To, to hide the fact that you. we didn't have any locks on the van. So it was a tow rope, but you could, a, could you actually open it from <laughs> the side and sneak in and stuff. That was quality. Was there something with the windows as well? Did we windows? Well, we originally covered the windows with... Like uh, newspaper articles, yeah. and Kerrang magazine posters, and then we spray painted them, and then we started realizing in the spray paint we could start scratching inverted crosses and everything, like <laughs> satanic messages in it. Like of the windows are broke as well, where you could like have a clip and slide. Oh it yeah, yeah, yeah that's so you just put your hand on the side of the van and slide. Slide it, it, just yeah, open it. So you yeah, could yeah, climb yeah. in the slide. Yeah. So basically, if anybody knew what our van was really like, they could have easily just had it. Yeah. They wouldn't have been able to start it, but they would have got everything out of it. It's funny because. Like, maybe not so much now, but probably just because I don't pay as much attention to band social media as I used to. But, like, weekly you'd see a touring band get broken into. Yeah. 
and there'd be a post, you know, like, like, like help us Facebook out or whatever saying, yeah, like we're stuck in fucking Germany, someone's broken into our van. Um, how that never happened to us? Yeah. Like, I have no idea. I always remember Spencer Spence saying... was always asleep in the thing. <laughs> yeah, true. No matter yeah, what yeah, city yeah. we got to, no matter what time of day it was, or whatever, we got, right, we're going exploring. Oh, I'm going to stay in the van and go to sleep. And yeah. Jim would be in the front with his, uh, what do you call him, airport headphones. <laughs> Massive yeah, <laughs> things. <laughs> He'd be there, and Spencer in the front. Just them two. Brilliant. Bodyguards. Yeah. Bless him. <laughs> so funny. Um, but yeah, I always remember Spenno saying we should get one of those big locks. And I think we even picked one up once. That's probably as close we got to making that van safe. What for? For the back doors? Or or maybe, yeah. <laughs> I remember being terrified of falling out of the back doors. Like, sleeping on the top <gasps> bottom. The side doors? And then facing... Yeah, but I'm sure... Yeah, you just reminded me of someone actually. <laughs> <to leave. laughs> Emery. It's the most sporadic <laughs> podcast you've ever done, man. When, yeah. uh, it's sober for a change. When we oh, played yeah. Sunderland, and it was a club night, and we didn't go on until about midnight. Yeah. And... I think I had work in the morning. Passion it was. Yeah, Club Passion. <laughs> oh, for classy, God. classy it's establishment. Now. Has it? Yeah. It's probably for the best. Oh, a little part of me's awful. Awful, <laughs> awful place. It was a club. And I think maybe somebody had work in the morning. And this is when Cooper was in the band. And yeah. that's when we found uh, that Mr. Men, Teddy. Oh, Colin. Colin. We found a, that oh, Colin Teddy Bear right. thing. And then we stayed up all night. And we were we nicked like an office chair from the back of back of the club. Yeah. And obviously we took the some seats out and so we had that middle bit yeah, which we could like dance and party in. So we put the office chair in there. <laughs> so on that A19 on the way home, we basically just slide in on this office chair. And we didn't you were know. trying to kick flip it. Yeah. In your heads and your drunken thing was like, that was totally doable. Ollie in it, like holding it, like Ollie in it. And then um, then <laughs> we were going down the motorway flying, absolutely drunk. And then the side door just opened. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> we were absolutely shitting it. Just like, <gasps> that was... I just came back to me there and that's probably one of the earliest like gigging memories yeah 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 like when we first started under the Scarlet Desire shit yeah that was dangerous <laughs> yeah. and that's when we didn't have a tow rope around the door yeah and it just opened you know when the fucking tiny blew up on, well it did blow up on the way to probably the biggest gig of your life oh shit yeah London, when we were going to London first yeah. thing in the morning and then we were like could be worse it could be raining because it was like glorious <laughs> sunshine, so we're all sat like by the van, just like yeah, having a beer and that, looking for the day, and then obviously it just started. Yeah, instantly. that was horrible. That because I felt like the van was going to flip over because we we were going, and it was like the front uh, front uh, right wheel. Yeah, and I remember it just going, <laughs> doo, 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 and then like this force of us all just like kind of going to one corner yeah, where Spenno yeah, was yeah. driving, felt like it was going to tip and flip. Yeah. That was scary, that. Spenno still talks about it like he rescued the title. <laughs> like, <laughs> kept us alive. Yeah, yeah, and like, fair play, but yeah, probably. We could have just... all been dead. Was oh. it on the way to the final, bef- or the semi final? It was for that weird competition semi-final. we got put into that I still have no idea how we won. The HMV one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was it. It was a round of it, but it wasn't the Manic Street Preachers one, because no, I was, was there the and I didn't one. go to the Manic Street Preachers one. That was Kenneth, Kenneth Town Forum. Because we played the garage, didn't we? Played the garage. Yeah. I fell over and knocked over Leeson's drum kit in the first <laughs> first 10 seconds of the song. Yeah. Yeah. How many years on is it now from that? I'll probably tell you when I jumped through my day, I booted you while Yeah, yeah, I remember you booted <laughs> me. <laughs> so Luke booted me. I forgot to do with you. Just when we got off stage, everyone was kicking off going, Richie, I can't believe you filmed the drum kit. It's like, big moment. Wiped out. It was out. To really well this competition. I was just keeping quiet going, I booted him. Wiped out the there. snare. <laughs> wiped out his crash. <laughs> wiped out his ride. <laughs> and all the roadies are running on. trying to fit. First song yeah. for... within about five seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like Battle of the Bands thing, wasn't it? That yeah. we it was supposed to be split into north, east, and south. Yeah, no, the north and south, but not one band from the north made it through. So we got shot in the south division, mm-hmm. and we turned up, reaffirmed the fact that there's a definitely a north south divide. When me and you were loading in gear, you're going, "Oh, you useless fucker, carry the amp in." No, fuck you. And the woman came running over, going. Are you alright? Don't argue. Don't argue. Yeah, like you're really like, no, worried. Speak to each other from the north. Just don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. And then you got two, three songs to impress the judges. First song, everyone jumped in the air trying to like show off as best you could. Booted him, cleaning the drum kit. Half the drum kit went over. Still By the time the first song kicked in, stare. we just got everything back to normal. <laughs> and, then just done. Was, and we won. <laughs> Yeah, we go through the next round. Because we were professional and carried on. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Nothing about talent or skill. Just, you <laughs> carried on when you knocked all the drums over. Could have stopped, good. but you kept playing. You got that was so embarrassing. Yeah. I and remember my manager from HMV drove down for that. <laughs> then we got through the next one, didn't we? Yeah. Which was a laugh. That was all right. Yeah. That, that, the night was like my kind of last memory of Mark Lambert because we... That was his name. <laughs> he bought everyone champagne. 
when you just went when we found out you've done yeah. that and then it was like right we're all going out and i think like th- for some reason like just no way around us was open except one pub so we went there that was it the one that's in the pub yeah yeah and then i somehow again. ended up oh. i ended up somehow with mark lambert on my own and some rather dangerous people drove past us in a mercedes <laughs> and he spat on it <laughs> and I, and he was like, just started swearing at him, and I was like, nice one. Like, I was not sober, but still, like, aware enough to know that you shouldn't spit on drug dealers' Mercedes. Yeah. And um, and he was like, ah, oh, fuck him. And he was like, wrecked, I think I was, like, trying to just fucking drag him back to the hotel. And then the Mercedes kind of, like, went down the road, and he just turned around. And I was like, <laughs> for a fuck's sake, started chasing us. So we ended up, like, fucking hiding in the doorway in London. But Mark was wrecked, and he just thought he could fight the world. And this car was like driving around looking for us and he'd be like, ah, you're fucking, I'll get you nothing, you fucking <laughs> what? I was like, I'm not getting pasted in the middle of London just because of you. Like, Quality. Yeah. And that was, that was the end of Mark. Yeah, and I never saw him Maybe he that. did get shot. We just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? That, yeah. was our, that was our best show, but also the messiest thing I've ever done in my life. Like, giving us lot wristbands and it was like, all you could drink, wasn't it? Yeah. All you could drink. And I met No the... questions asked at the bar, fill your bags up, whatever. Shit. Met it's that. just a stupid idea to begin with. I met that guy, the get top, that top like, music producers for like Universal and <laughs> Island Records, and I'm just like, hang on, lads. I, had, I remember I had four beers in my hand. Because <laughs> being from the North East, we're not used yeah. to free beer. We think it might run out. So <laughs> we just had like, four, please. And we were putting them down and then shaking hands, and I still don't know what I said to them. <laughs> so I just like, hold on. But you're not signed by Universal. So. <laughs> That's impressive. That was brilliant. <laughs> but you just reminded me of something about Mark spitting on. Remember when we picked up <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil Pollard? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was the weirdest turn of events ever. That I, I still don't entirely know how we managed to be in the same place at the same time. Yeah. Pure act of God. I, that like, was brilliant too, with that though. I remember not being able to make that tour and just seeing like pieces on social media like of you guys and then Phil Pollard being in the same area. And then he slowly made up in the van on tour <laughs> yeah. with you, like just. <laughs> it was there. Uh, it was floods. It was when all the floods were going on. Yeah, it was when we played with uh, We Are Fiction and our yeah. time, our time down here, our time. We've now t- yeah, our time down here. We've now become yeah. Creeper. Yeah, like, creep massive. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I prefer our time down here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was wicked. Um, that was when we were in Peterborough, wasn't it? Did we meet him in Peterborough? Mm-hmm. And he the floods happened. Why he was, was supposed to go back to work. He got redirected. He was yeah. out of the girl in London at the time. And I think he had to go to Nottingham, but couldn't get to Nottingham. And he got to Peterborough. And then we were like, oh, we'll just pick you up. I think we still had a few days left. And then he just rang in work sick. <laughs> and that same night, he crowd surfed, I think, when we were playing. Broke his ankle, wasn't it? Or something. Yeah. Stole a seagull. That's, that's what I was getting. <laughs> seagull. <laughs> Stole a seagull. When um, we stayed at Tom from We Are Fiction's house, remember the photographer, the yeah, drummer, yeah. who was like, he was quality, he was very polite and stuff. Yeah. Unless you say not like us lot. He said his house, <laughs> absolute <laughs> Pollard was just Pollard. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah, yeah. It was brilliant. And he was just like walking. We, I think we went to the shop one night, didn't we? And he, I think he spat on like a Lamborghini or something, didn't he? <laughs> no, he saw an Audi and said, look at that posh Audi prick. And then just decided to spin. He had a thing against Audi cars yeah. at the time, I think. Yeah. And then we were walking along and then turned around and he has like a seagull in both hands and a fag in his back. <laughs> but the seagull's giving the same look as Pollard's giving like proper like just sad face like, yeah, because he broke his ankle, the way that came about is he was lagging behind all of us and we were just like, I can't be arsed waiting for him, he's pissed. He's broke his ankle. He'll catch up eventually. Yeah. And him just shouting the words, look at the fucking size of this pigeon. <laughs> and that's how we revealed the fact he had a massive seagull in his hands. And we were like, mate, you can't bring that where you was. I'll put it in the van with Spence and Jamie because as usual they were asleep. And we were just like, oh, no, that's not happening. And he's like, I'll let it go. And I remember him throwing it in the air and clearly there was something wrong with it because it just fell straight back in front of another car. I think it's all right. <laughs> I don't think it's all right. I forgot. Well, now and again, I get grace thanks to the wonders of Facebook of just memories from ever so many years ago and just pops up a photo of him with a massive seagull in his hands yeah. just going, with a big fag in his mouth just going. I remember the other photo from that night with his ass out. <laughs> I think he was trying to rub it on Tom all night and he just wanted to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, the politest man from down south. Yeah. And he just spent the entire night shouting, Good. Crap, Howard, Pollard. Okay. Oh, jeez. 
showed him from his living room, stark naked, laid on his floor. I was like, I don't like yesterday's buns, I like current buns. <laughs> Just shouting that type of crap at him all night. So funny. That was brilliant. But yeah, that was messed up. We always found that like wh- whenever we stayed at someone's house on tour, it was either absolutely unreal or like probably a shit all. And it was just like, like never in between. I don't yeah. know about you guys. I can't really remember staying at someone's house, like I said, with you guys. It was always in the van. I but remember um, we stayed up at somebody's house in Derby. Somebody liked that band. Somebody like stayed at the house and it was an absolute mess. And our it was van. only me and you stayed in yeah, it. Our van, this up for her, yeah. Our, our, our van was a mess anyway. Yeah. And so we like we you know when you just like meet mates and like you just make mates. I can't remember what she's called now. But we made friends with, like she was friends with Violet and stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't stay. I was sort of like yeah yeah whatever because it's best staying in a house than staying in the van. Is, yeah. I wanted to stay in the van that night. <laughs> <laughs> that house. There was only me and you would stay in it, and I should have been suspecting that to begin with. And the other lads were like, no, it's fine. We'll stay in the van. And we're like, well, I'm staying inside. Yeah, it's it's warm, well. warm. Get a cup of tea. And I remember yeah. going. So she had, like an understairs toilet, and I remember going into it and then being onions, like in the toilet. Yeah. Not like in it, but like. Growing roots out of them, like Awful. books piled up, like right on either side of the loo, like, like mud mold, on the floor, yeah, yeah just... everything. You couldn't see one kitchen countertop, and she's like, "Yeah, stay where you want." My mum doesn't care. I was like, "Yeah, you can tell." Like we were like, "Yeah, <laughs> still be polite." Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, she's putting us up for night, and we got a sofa. Sound? Do you want out to eat? Do you want to drink? No, like, fine. No. Full of better the show. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm bloody starving. <laughs> we stayed. Um, Awful. We raced. We stayed in in Hull at this lad's house. Um, who was, was a letting you guys band? stay in anyone's house? Yeah. He was, um, <laughs> was in the band that was on tour of Suicide Silence and he fell out of the tour bus and smashed his face off. Jesus. You, they're like a big hardcore band, like miles better than Rafe's, but they like, kind of took us under their wing a bit. Right. Singing, like, I'm so sorry, I can't remember mm-hmm. his name, but he's a fucking top dude. Yeah. Um, and his house was like a really nice house in Hull. And uh, we were like, it was the summer, so we sat after the gig, we sat in his garden, bought loads of beer, bought loads of food. Like, we had the fire pit going, like, proper chill, smoking weed and that, like, un- unreal, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it was class. And then um, me and Ray managed to, like, we were like, oh, we're staying in the attic because we would, like, figure out where everyone was sleeping and that. It was mum and dad, mum and dad's house, and they were there, and they were, yeah. like, they were also, like, unbelievably cool. And um, we got wrecked, and I was like, right, fucking go to bed. So me and Ray went to bed. And then I don't know what happened between those hours and then the morning, mm-hmm. But we woke up and like we got woken up by the birds singing and like the sun coming through the fucking sky. Like Beautiful. That. And I was like, "This is you amazing. and Ray spooning." <laughs> Might as well have been like we were like, "This is me." Oh, morning, Went downstairs, love. <laughs> his dad was fucking was on the breakfast and he was like, he was like, "All right, lads, what you fancy?" He was like, "I'm an award-winning chef." <laughs> and he had fucking accolades all over the kitchen. That and we were, we were like, he was like, "Whatever you want." He was like, "I've got eggs, bacon, blah blah,", blah. and we were like, "Just fucking a bit of everything." And he was like. Just take a seat in the garden. I'll bring it over to you. So we were like, "This is class." Me and Ray, like, literally living like kings. And then we were like, "Where's all the other lads?" <laughs> and tried phoning them. Like nobody's phone was working. And we went into the rooms that were supposed to be staying, and they weren't in there. And we were like, "What the fuck?" So we got the van, opened the van door, and they're all like, "Oh my god, thank fuck, there you are, there you are!" Like, the, basically, I don't know what transpired between him and the rest of the band, but they all fell out, and he just locked them out of the house. So <laughs> really? they slept in the van. All the batteries, like, all, most of the phones were in, like, in the house yeah. already. So, like, they just had no way of getting in touch with us and, like, letting them back in the yeah, house. Yeah. Or, like, just fucking, yeah. And they, they, they were, like, freezing cold. The fucking stunk. And then we were, like, by the time we'd figured it out, we'd eaten. And I'd have a coffee. And we were, like, need to get on the road, boys. <laughs> Got to go to the next show. And they were, like, you fucking joking. We were, like, we, were, like, felt like a fucking million dollars. And it was, like, slap bang in the middle of a tour as well, you know, when, like, you kind of need a shower. Yeah, reach that point. Like, it was like reinvigorating, and then like they were just refresh, and they were just a mess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we but sort of showered at every show though. Like me yeah, and you yeah. had a known like sort of like setup of just going blocking sinks with toilet paper, yeah. and just <laughs> yeah. got so comfortable at in one point where you just get stuck as in the venue and yeah. just be in yeah, the yeah, sink. Just walking around. I remember walking around Rock City. Oh, screw like, you and your fancy showers and that. Yeah, they, we had <laughs> towels just wrapped around us and like flip flops on, just <laughs> just walking around, just like I'm just getting a shower, and people were like, "What the fuck are they doing?" Like you don't understand. You don't it's understand. Glamorous yeah. people think too. No, no, like wet white washes which everybody does from festivals but yeah like cold water sink washes full just like people were just going for the in the loo yeah and the toilet guy will be there like like you know getting his tips and stuff and we'll yeah. be sat there talking to him like with a towel wrapped around us getting a wash and yeah. stuff you <laughs> shower become, you become a bit Did feral it? don't you like you become and you, you just I don't think I've ever been domesticated <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
but yeah, you just kind of get to the point where you just don't care anymore, do you? You just like, right, I'm just gonna have to do this. Yeah. I can either be stinky and ming, and I can actually have some sort of dignity. <laughs> yeah, even yeah, it, it means like losing your dignity it. to get it. You are. You get like a mistime thing where you're like, right, I'll get washed in the sink before I sound check, and then all of a sudden you're like, it's getting really noisy in here all of a sudden. And they'd open the doors early. Yeah. And you'd be stood in the toilet like <laughs> starkers, getting a wash in the sink. <laughs> and you get people who come to see your band from God knows where. Yeah. Piling in the toilets like you've been outside like down in bottles of two L while they're waiting in the yeah. queue. And going, Oh, aren't you playing tonight? Headlining. Uh, yeah. yeah. Why are you why are you in the toilet? About yeah. wash and, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not you now on. Yeah. Please go away and leave me alone. <laughs> but you, the people don't realize like you're obviously playing, especially in the, like when it's summer. It's yeah. just absolutely stinking hot. And we're like going crazy on stage and you're just drenched. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you've got to get in a van and just be like with another like five guys and not more. And you're just like a mess. <laughs> absolute mess. Like, I need a wash. I stink. Everybody stinks. So you've got to have some dignity. But yeah. Oh, well then as a wraith, when you were in them, what yeah. was the most either embarrassing or ridiculous thing you did? Let's bring this to you a little bit now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Turn, turn the heat up a notch. Should we tell a lot you stay upstairs? <laughs> no, no, no. See, like, I would, this, whenever, like, kind of talk about race, I was going to do this as, like, a, a one off fucking two stories anyway, but I was like, I can't do it as the first one. <laughs> but here we are. So, we were, we were playing in Mansfield. It's quite early on in, in our in our career. We were playing with a band called Destroy BC, who were fucking, like, absolute lads. And um, I think that we decided to go for an all-you-can-eat Chinese because we race had a thing where every time we tried to find a water park we nicked it from you guys but we were like water park we militant with done thing yeah so we tried our hardest to find a water park wherever we were going and um so we've been swimming all day and we were fucking knackered so we went to an all-you-can-eat Chinese and um unbeknownst to me right nobody else ate the rice I obviously I'm an all-you-can-eat Chinese so I was fucking hiding rice down my neck and um I then like get to get to the uh, get to the venue, start unloading, and I was like, all of a sudden out of nowhere, like I had like horrific stomach pains. Like I'm like I felt like I was getting fucking stabbed. Like, <laughs> horrible. Because we all know how that feels. I remember <laughs> being in the venue and hiding under the table and just being like like that because my stomach hurt so bad, and um, it was food poisoning basically and it was like a fucking instant so I was talking to and I was like fucking I like what and they were like oh well didn't eat the rice did you and I was like yeah like and they were like well you never eat the rice like especially when if you've got a gig and you don't know and you're on to it and that like it's always the rice that goes bad isn't it and I was like well thanks for the edit <laughs> but no I ate fucking loads of rice and um that's an amateur mistake at a buffet anyway I know what are you talking about what was your did we eat right last night no it was noodles we were at a buffet last night. <laughs> yeah. I feel fine. We feel fine. Yeah, yeah. right. Good. Well, yeah, you don't know in any way. But um, basically, so then all of a sudden, I was like, I'm going to shit myself. So I go to the toilet. There's no light. There's no lock. There's no toilet paper. So I'm phoning Ray and I'm like, mate, I can't stop shitting. Like, please. Like, they're all just cackling. Like, I can hear them can all. Can play drums like, on the seat? On the yeah, yeah. So, and I timed it. I had 14 shits in one hour. <laughs> it was fucking brutal. And this gig, right... I was in Mansfield and the venue was unbelievable. The show was getting filmed. It was probably one of the best gigs <coughs> I've ever played, like in terms of it was full. It was just like. Un- the sound was mint. Yeah, yeah. sold loads of merch. Like everything has the potential to be like fucking class. And I was just out of the back shit the whole time. <laughs> on stage, right? We're playing. And Gary McKenzie drove us on this tour as well. Five more minutes. Yeah, glass avalanche. And then um, he was filming us from the side of the stage. So I. I there be some footage somewhere. And I farted during one of the songs, right? And I was like, I have, I don't know what that was. I was like, it, I have zero control over whether or not it was a fart or shit. Luckily, it was a fart, right? But everyone, and the stage was fucking massive, in turn, in the band, all turned around and were like, <laughs> and I was like, sorry, lads, I just fucking like, that's, that's all I've got. And I remember looking at Gary and Gary filming. You know, when you see it hit someone and he was, all of a sudden he just went, <laughs> like that. And I was like, I just fucking, it's disgusting. Yeah. So yeah, so that's probably my most horrific to a story. I like to think Very nearly shit myself on stage. I like that, to that was the last gig of this year, actually. So I was like, by that point, I got in the van and I was like, I just fucking get me on. Like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever crapped myself on stage. We've been sick on stage. Oh, numerous times. But that's only just because we were all over. Um, yeah, that's, that's the things really I fell off stage, broke my foot on stage. How did you do that? That was when I was in Columbus. Uh, the stage was like wonky. 
so it was like a weird level on it like yeah. like this table like a little bit was just raised yeah and i landed on it and just rolled on my foot and that was two songs in yeah i uh, just my foot swelled up i still carried on because adrenaline kicks in so you just like yeah, 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 and then yeah. i took my shoe off i was, gee, it was like freaking football on my foot yeah but that was that that hurt yeah. um who else has knacked themselves me twice you've <laughs> broke your collarbone was that broke from my collarbone when we played the keys with evergreen terrace <laughs> yeah why they were ever playing there to begin with on Lebanon. Yeah. Crowd surfing, putting my arms, arms out and just dropping straight on one arm. Yeah. Thinking it was a sprain. When it we turned out break it. Was it in Stoke where you smash your head off the thingy? You like it split my eyebrow wide that open. That was it. You nutted the wall. <laughs> I liked being I liked being a bit of a prat and just kind of being as active as I could on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a ladder being left out, I don't know why, about sixteen foot high. It's like some weird barn conversion venue. Yeah. And I was like climbing up that mid set. Going up that, it'll be all right. It'll be class. Yeah, I'll do like a bit of the song off that. And I remember getting the top of it and thinking, "This is really fucking high." Sixteen foot, I'm not good at heights anyway. It was in no way attached to the wall, and as I held onto it, it just started coming away from the wall. And I thought, I'm just going to bend backwards <laughs> on the stage here and in front of all these people. So I like swung my body in like some sort of weird fashion, nutted this ladder. Yeah, and I just thought, oh, I've hurt my head. I thought, get down from here. It's a bad idea. Halfway through the song, like jumping about, flinging my head about, and I was like, "Fucking, I'm not sweatier than I thought I was." And was looking at the crowd and just them being horrified and I was like something's <laughs> not right here and the lights flashing up and I was looking and I was like what's this and I was just covered in blood and I was like eh and I like looked at someone and it wasn't like my part to sing or do any vocals and looked at some guy in the crowd and I went what's this and he just went your eyebrow mate your eyebrow and it just <laughs> split clean in two and I had like one yeah. going up here like rock style and the other one yeah, down here yeah, yeah. like some sad anime character and it just split <laughs> clean in half and I was like oh there's nothing I can do now we're only about four songs in yeah and then, because we were tour, on tour, and no one really wanted to waste any time, we didn't bother going to the hospital for stitches. Yeah, of course. So I had to use duct tape. Yeah, I thought we said <laughs> so it. <laughs> two days with this silver duct tape on my eyebrows, yeah, still playing shorts, having to explain to people why I was an idiot. Yeah. And why I had duct tape on my frigging eyebrow. And I've still got a scar now. Oh, yeah. Which people still say to me, do you put them slits in your eyebrows yourself then? Hey, they're coming <laughs> no, back then. It's not fashion they're statement. They're coming back. <laughs> it's not a fashion statement. How'd you break your collarbone? It was when I stage dived at Evergreen Terrace. And oh, right, I yeah, got, sorry. like, you know, one of the ones where you kind of dive and. You kind of glide along a few people, then there's not enough people at the show. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You fall off the back. <laughs> did that. I remember um, Jim broke his collarbone, but wasn't gigging. But then we had to get Neil in, didn't we? Neil Murkowski. And when we oh, had to play oh, Red yeah. Festival, he had to do all, like, backing guitar. Well, basically, well, lead guitar for yeah. Jim. And do all this stuff, because just Jim was on stage, just rocked up with, like, this cast on. His remember cast on his arms stuck out at, like, an angle from his body with his palm up. So he constantly looked like he was begging for change. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. That, um, do you remember when Jamie got that really bad sunburn? It was that. Oh, that was that. That was that Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just been sat out in the sun like a fucking. We, did, honestly, we drank all the like beers. <laughs> that was horrific. Like big bubbles on his shoulders, and he was. I remember putting his guitar in, and he was like, oh, yeah. I "Just don't know if I can." That do was it. a tattoo festival, wasn't it? Oh, that was outdoor tattoo festival. Yeah. And we uh, we we rocked up about ten in the morning, and the guy like promoter was like, "Oh, there's some beers like behind the stage. Like help yourselves." thinking all oh, right sound and we just basically drank all the beer for every yeah, so band everyone, everyone, don't take yeah, the piss yeah. it's meant yeah. to last all the bands all day and i think one of i think it was charlton said one of the other bands turned up and went about five minutes before the duty play anymore fuck them then <laughs> <laughs> as charlton's general attitude would be to most things i remember i specifically remember like it was again just kind of being a bit feral and doing what we wanted and there was all sorts on that day wasn't there, there was like cabaret dancers and fucking it was like a weird all day yeah it was and one of those like mad like steampunk kind of things yeah going on, and i specifically remember like we'd just go over and get beers and then an act did start but because it was all like open plan we'd all just have to hide behind stuff oh, yeah, with Charlie, it was like yeah. Popping up behind. yeah <laughs> he was popping his head up going do you want, want a can <laughs> he's like so <laughs> <laughs> we're all pissing ourselves and the acts are like Fucking yeah, he, kept, he kept ha- popping his head up behind the stage and like waving to us and there was about a couple of hundred people there and I can remember the compare guy coming on and going I can see you hiding behind the stage staring at those uh, dancers we've got and burlesque dancers and him just like walking back with about four beers and I'm going absolutely not the fucking rank <laughs> <laughs> shooting him down in one we were nice people that. I swear but <laughs> just care. a different sense of humour I think yeah. <laughs> so remember our first tour when we went up to Scotland I remember I got that drunk in Scotland and woke yeah. up in England. <laughs> well, that was the night you became a human volcano. That was just ridiculous, that. I remember, I remember um, 
Yeah, he went to Scotland. That was the night Martin had got arrested because he jumped out the van on top onto a copper. Jumps a bit of a thick statement. He Gosh. tried to jump off the top bunk and fell. <laughs> <all over. laughs> not the copper. Nearly wiped out the copper. Sweet talking the copper not to get arrested. Yeah, I remember we were leaving the venue, and I wanted to be sick outside the window. Please don't judge me. <laughs> I wanted to be sick out the window, and for some reason, even though the window was open, I still didn't bother to be sick. But I turned back into the van. And just throw up everywhere. It would even throw up, though. You just had your head back like you were in like, <laughs> some sort of massage chair, and it just bubbling up out your mouth. And that was that was the last oh, memory of that night. Like one of them and then next night, I was in England sort of <laughs> with the worst hangover ever. And we went to Wet and Wild that morning as well. Martin nearly killed Jamie that night. Jamie, our guitar player, mm-hmm. obviously not a few people. He's got diabetes and that. We got even these cards for, like buy one get one free and all drinks on. Oh, shit, Martin yeah. was like plying gym full of drink. <laughs> Plying in full of bits and Jamie's like oh yeah I'm off my face like hyper I've never seen Jimmy in such a way in my life and found out that mine had been giving him full sugar Red Bull <laughs> <laughs> so the clip of him the next day was even killed worse him. yeah nearly killed him that was mad that and that was the two when we had literally just one bed which was the door yeah and it was still with just, the handle and we were all sleeping in beds we had all the full like um, sleeping on like like the chairs and everything it was horrible like sleeping <laughs> on fire it was freezing cold you couldn't get comfortable we yeah. didn't really loads of Loads of shows got cancelled and that. And like we were the, like the other bands we were touring with were like near home where the shows got cancelled, so they just go home. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. we were like miles away, so we couldn't go home. There's literally nothing worse than being on tour and having your show cancelled. Yeah. Like yeah. it is the fucking worst. It's a nightmare. But then we got used to it because it happened like quite a few times. Yeah. So we just like, right, we'll just, yeah, go to the, go to the, you know, what do you call it? Go to Water Park. That's what I meant. Water Park. I was trying to think of the word there. Yeah. I was going to say like Water World. Which also That's double up was a shower. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and then we bought. You've never seen a look of concern on parents' faces though when you get about twelve lads walking. <laughs> yeah, with all the same, with all the same shots. Yeah. Remember, like a Mark random bought. Wednesday afternoon as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. Does yeah, it? we went in. Um, we all needed swim shorts, and Mark went in and bought everybody swim shorts, and they were all exactly the same color shorts. Apart from, luckily, because I was really skinny at that time, he bought me like a tiny kids pair. So I was the only one who was like different shorts. So I didn't look like a dick. Yeah. Yeah. You had lime green ones that looked like you know them horrible like. 70s running shorts with like big slit yeah, at the yeah. side he had them on there so he's had galactic <laughs> space print shorts on yeah. and it must have been 9 or 10 they were just looking like taking photos we sold some merch that day though in the water bag <laughs> <laughs> there's two girls like you guys are in a band aren't you he's like yeah 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 and then they were like sweet in the side of van like yeah we'll buy some merch and that. like sweet like ice cream van selling it out the window <laughs> in the car park so funny but yeah that that too was hilarious but yeah when you oh, and that was also that time they got run over in Coventry <laughs> When um, we played Coventry, and this was with, I can't remember the bands now, Farewell City. I think they were one of them, yeah. They were some part Dividing the Line, the well-known little scene band from back in the day and yeah, all that. that. Yeah, was that them? Who else? I'm sure somebody else was on it. The Chase. That was it. The Chase was on it. And we went to this, like, student union on the on the night after the gig, because we got free in. And I nearly fought some like really posh like seven foot rugby dude. Yeah. So I mean, While you were on my shoulders. Yeah, yeah, he said something. <laughs> and I was just a little midget guy, just like, I'll oh, fuck you up. And that just obviously being an idiot, being drunk. I remember that. And then I remember we left. And I think I just stepped out on the road and somebody nearly wiped me out. And then the dickhead me, because they were just, I think they'd been at the club and I think they'd been at the gig. They were like, oh, do you want to just come back to ours for your drinks? I was like, yeah. So I just got in this car and just bugged it off and left everybody. At the time, you were about 12 feet in front of me in the road, so I didn't hear any of the conversation. Just saw him pile himself into a car. He didn't Fuck open the door, he just climbed in through the window. It was some, like, Canadian guy. And he <laughs> just like, yeah, right. And then I invited everybody back, and I remember Cooper trying to get in the fridge. No, he did. He emptied the fridge. Took all the drawers and everything out the fridge yeah. and got into it. And, and the last came and we were just like, oh, can we have a drink out of the fridge? And she was like, yeah, sure. And got the, opened the fridge and he was just sat there. <laughs> Cooper was just in the fridge. <laughs> I'm starting to see where not many people have yeah, places yeah, to stay for us. Yeah, that was mad. That that was our first tour. So that was it was a good tour. That <laughs> you, you know when, when that guy tried to not pay you in Nottingham, and um, me just played in Nottingham, and I think Martin wasn't there. Only I came in the van for some reason, and um, so you became the adopted manager. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy was trying to get away with not paying you, so it's down to me to, to get the money. Sort out. And uh, rock solid Rick Baker. <laughs> Johnny Concrete. <laughs> but um, he was trying to, uh, yeah, every excuse under the sun. So like, oh, I've got the money in my PayPal, but it's like trapped and I'm waiting for a new bank. You know, like I'm yeah. waiting for a new card. So then I can't actually use my PayPal at the minute and blah, blah, blah. Just 
so I think it was me and Jamie were like trying to be intimidating and we were basically <laughs> like we're not fucking going we're not leaving yeah. until we get this money like we need this fucking money to survive for a band and Jamie, it was when Jamie was doing that thing where he was driving to a gig and then driving straight back oh, yeah, the yeah. next day the mad cunt um, and the lad was like right I tell you what he was like I think I can get this money he was like but it's from this like random house and I'm going to have to get a bus and blah 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 and Jamie was like right fuck it well I've got my car um, so we'll just jump in the car and go and, and it's get fiesta. it fiesta yeah um, so we all jumped in the car and this lad drives us like for 10 minutes around Nottingham pulls up in this house right which can only have you seen Monster House yeah yeah it's quite scary that it looked like that <laughs> house like kids film yeah scary shit it was like it just looked like a fucking shack and this lad was like it'd be five minutes so like alright got out of the car ran the house turned out of the gym you know, we've never seen this lad like ever again he's just run through this house you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, like he's gone. just gone um, and Jim was like no no we'll wait out we'll wait out so we waited five, fair play, five minutes later the lad comes out red faced sweating breathing heavy right it's fucking like looked completely dishevelled comes over and he paid us but in five pound notes that had all been scrumpled up into tiny balls <laughs> weird it was like there you are and he was like unravelling them and like putting them in your hand and I was like I don't know what the fuck just happened I don't know what's on these five pound notes but it's like Jamie just get the fuck out of here like yeah yeah, yeah just, 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 just get us out yeah. of here we're getting paid like fuck man yeah it's hard work same guy I try to do it to race Oh, really? Same venue. No I've seen the kid in her head. I know him. I, went, I bet he fucking tries to not pay us. But That's when people should get blacklisted, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I've got a few, actually, from people not paying us. I always remember when we went to Barrow, we survived Atlantica, and now Eliza and the Bear. Yeah, it's a shit all. In Cali. <laughs> yeah. I'm still convinced there's nothing else there but that venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People with six fingers, no offence. Um, and I remember Sorry, Cali. They say if they haven't got electricity, <laughs> radios, nothing up there. <laughs> they don't know what podcasts are. They haven't got Apple yet. <laughs> They've got wireless. Um, I remember Callie had a hammer. <laughs> he was like, I'm going in there and I'm getting my money. Yeah. Because the promoter didn't turn up to the show. Nobody knew in the venue we were both playing. Yeah. And that and there was no PA or anything. We didn't play in the end. So we drove like three hours, was it? Two and a half hours it took to get there. Yeah. And we turned up and nobody knew what was going on. Was it in like a working men's club? Yeah, the promoter, yeah, there, yeah, promoter yeah. was at like a, a party and stuff. We were like, get the promoter here. Yeah. I think we got a bit of money in the end, but I remember Callie going in with a hammer. Just like, yeah. just, what's going to get fucking, we're going to get paid. Yeah. And another time I remember was the Hartlepool show when we played with, um, oh God, I can't remember the band. Uh, we played with them a few times. I don't know. But anyway, I didn't really like them. Um, <laughs> it's a recurring thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A recurring thing. I just don't like you people. I just don't like you two. Um, <laughs> it was when we played Hartlepool and we weren't actually supposed to be playing, but the promoter didn't have the balls to tell us that we weren't actually playing. Yeah, they were like a co-op promotion group and one of them had booked us and the other one didn't want to book us. Yeah. And they wouldn't pay us. And that was when mine ended up smacking the lad and knocking him out. Yeah, because I was getting knocked <laughs> off and I was like, right, I'm going to break him. He's not paying us, I'm just going to break him. I'm going to get something out of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Mike's going, no, don't you do it. Don't you do it. We're not having that. You'll get bad reputation. And as I turned and walked off, all I heard was, Mike, all of Yeah, Martin had like totally wiped him out. And in the end, he didn't pay us. But the other band gave us like some of their money, which was right. obviously class <laughs> of them. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, that was mad. Yeah, we, I remember that that bar in Finesse, like that venue, fucking hell, what a desolate town. And um, but we always managed to have really good. We always had really good shows in Shittles because I just think that there was so little else going on. Yeah. You know, like we played, go to London, play to thirty people, got yeah. fucking barrel, play to two hundred. Yeah, because it was just so li- like each barrel show we did. Yeah, same. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's just fuck all going on. Yeah. I think. so they'll go and see anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're all drawn in by the bright lights. Yeah, yeah foreigners. <laughs> Yeah, they've seen the van come in like, who's that? Yeah. Oh my God, they've got a van. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember that. But when we used to, like you saying about Jim when he drove the places, I used to like those actually when those, I used to prefer to go in the van, obviously. Yeah. But when we used to drive, I didn't mind it because it was always me, you and Jim in the car. We also get a couple of cans for the way home yeah. and obviously we're there. And I remember one time we were driving back from somewhere and it was a long drive. And nobody's on the road, and I remember we were listening to BBC One Extra, something like that, and it was all just nineties R and B, like D- Craig David and Fat and Small. I always remember that it was quality because yeah, it was just yeah, tune yeah. after tune. So you remember that, and I remember Jim falling asleep at the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I was just into the tunes. No, that, that I was loving it, loving it, loving it. I loving it, Jim falling asleep at the wheel, and you not noticing at all. Oh. And then just hearing as he was going up the pumps and just looked, and he's fast asleep. Yeah, that was great as well. But yeah, um, I'm trying to think what else. Good times. Yeah, I can't remember what else. Like car ones, like was a bit more difficult though because then you couldn't 
obviously you have all your gear and stuff, you yeah. then had to have the problem of going, right, I need, need to get in touch with the other bands, support bands, who can I link cabs off? Is there a back line? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was a pain in the backside. And then obviously being in the back of a car with my bass guitar and probably another car piled yeah. on top of you and you just like can't move. But you also had a nice like, like platform. Table. Yeah, yeah, yeah table yeah. basically yeah. for beers. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that was it. Rolling, yeah. Oh, beers. Drinking beers in the van and then peeing out the window. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, what I'd give. Trapping your, trapping your dick in between the slidey window and the metal bit of the van and then having somebody hold you back so you don't <laughs> yeah, yeah, fall yeah, yeah. A true friendship. on your knees yeah. Yeah, yeah. trying to have a wee at 70 miles an hour yeah. in the middle of the waterway at night freezing cold with your penis can we talk about the fact that you can't actually feel anything yeah. while you're pissing, you so you just don't know if you stop. <laughs> so you've got to like wait an extra minute, which is an extra minute if your dick freezes enough, and you're like, I might, I might come back in here and I'm just going to piss all over the lads because so, I don't know what's so going on. So then we came up with the ingenious idea of getting a milk bottle and cutting the lid off so it was big enough yeah. to fit Luke's massive penis in it <laughs> <laughs> and peeing in it. But then we were like, all right, we haven't got a lid for it. <laughs> so it's popping it's it out. It. <laughs> pouring it out that was awful but uh, <laughs> that was disgusting those are the these are the like the little times the, the little moments were playing vomit tennis as we nicely named it and when mm. one person was being sick the, the job was to try and make them more sick and then so much so that someone else would be sick yeah and you'd be sat opposite sides of the van to each other throwing Whoa, up and then looking yeah. at the other one with vomit all over your face yeah, yeah. we came up with some horrible shit I don't know how Spence put up with us all <laughs> Spence was like obviously sober. Oh yeah, Spence Driving. punched. Yeah, yeah. Spence knocked me out one. <laughs> <laughs> he literally, <laughs> I was I was winding him up, just yeah. being a dick like always, and running around the van like just just getting at him, getting at him, and just finally got to him. I must have yeah. pissed him off all to her, <laughs> and then he just turned around and just managed to get me at the right time and just whacked me full force <laughs> in the face, and I just <laughs> went out. <laughs> Just like so happy, yeah. but I probably needed that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you all need it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but he just wiped me out. Oh, fucking mental. So, all right, <laughs> been, been an hour. Flies Has by. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking flies by that, doesn't it? I've got more. We'll do a part two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. We will. People don't, people don't have the attention span, unfortunately, to them because we can talk. Well, I'll listen to them. Um, I mean. Have you ever listened to those conspiracy guys? Yeah, podcast. well, some of them, yeah. Eight yeah. hours long. <laughs> eight hour yeah, podcast to, on yeah. Hitler and the occult Fucking there's only so much like you can take yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sound? thanks boys but yeah we'll do a part two definitely yeah that's right we'll cheers for that I'll spend all, uh... I'm getting drunk for the next one yeah, yeah. Course, yeah you'll get more out of me that way yeah <laughs> <laughs> get, to get, to get drunk <laughs> <laughs>